Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we're taking a look at the Lance. This is a weapon that you can find in a camp southwest of the Death Touch Catacombs. I'll have an image on screen showing the location. The weapon requires 20 strength and 14 dexterity to wield and it weighs 9 units. By default the skill on the weapon is charge 4th and at plus 25 it will have a physical base damage on the heavy scaling of 277 and an A scaling in strength, no dexterity scaling. This weapon is the only great spear that can be infused and it's the only one you can really use on a large variety of builds due to that reason. That makes it very viable for a lot of different builds and you can really have a lot of options with how you use this weapon. But at the end of the day, no matter what Ash of War you put it on, no matter what upgrade path you go with, you're going to be using this weapon to do one thing, and one thing primarily, and that is to poke. You will have the option with this weapon to go for counter hits, and they are extremely valuable, and that's really kind of the way it goes. The weapon has thrusting attacks on all of its attacks, except for its rolling attack and crouch attack, which are a sweep. And with that, because it has so many thrusting attacks, it works extremely well with the Spear Talisman, and of course that means that your best bet is to go for counter hits. Now that said, pros of the weapon, of course you do have the forward momentum side of things, it's great at chasing people down, and it has a good amount of reach, so you can do a good amount of work with hitting people and getting a roll catch while they're trying to run away from you. On top of that, the running R2 I find to be very good for that because it is a multi-hit attack and it has surprisingly decent tracking. As I mentioned previously, the Spear Talisman does work on all of the attacks except for the rolling and crouching attack, and that means that you'll be able to trade hits and get that extra counter damage. And with the rolling and crouch attack, because they are a sweep, if you do a crouch attack and unlock to hit your opponent as they're trying to roll or strafe around you, that is a good way of dealing with people who, uh, well, do try to roll and strafe around you. Now that said, the reason I mention that is because one of the big cons of the weapon is that it is a very linear moveset, and with that there are some blind spots in it, so being able to use your crouch attack to mitigate for that is a good thing to do. One thing that I also find to be very useful is that your turtle poke that you can do with this weapon when one-handed has pretty quick uh, tracking and is a very useful attack to use when someone is trying to get behind you. You'll really just kind of whip around with that poke and catch them by surprise. The same kind of goes with your R2 attack. It has a slight delay to it, so it's not always the best thing to do because it can get you backstabbed if you do need an attack with a quicker turn time, but if you have the timing to manage it, going for an R2 instead of a turtle poke when someone is trying to get behind you can be a very good maneuver. It is something that I do pretty often, and I find to have a good amount of success with it. Now that said, one thing that I also do like with the R2 is that when you do poke someone with an R1, if you follow it up with an R2, there's a decent chance to roll catch with that as well. Now that said, it's not going to get it all the time, but because an R1 into R1 doesn't true combo, an R1 into R2 is your best chance at having some form of combo on your moveset. Now as far as cons of the weapon, there are a couple of them that I have mentioned or alluded to so far, one being the linearity of the moveset, and the other being that some of the attacks are a bit slow, and on top of that, tracking is really not spectacular. It's a very straightforward moveset because everything is a straightforward thrust aside from the rolling and crouching attack. So keep that in mind when you're using this weapon and you'll have a bit better of a time. You do have, uh, you have a couple of options on how to mitigate that. One being, of course, like I said earlier on, the rolling and crouch attack, but that does become predictable. The other method is, of course, using an ash that gives you some variety in your moveset. Something like Spinning Slash is pretty decent on it because it adds variety and gives you that wide spin that has a good amount of damage to it. Barbaric Roar is another one that I enjoy on this weapon because it's it's fun. It's just silly the way you bash your opponent over the head with the lance. There's something just 
very satisfying about that. And you get a great amount of Piper Armor with that as well, so it's hard to go wrong. Other uh, options, of course, would be Warcry. You get a good amount of Piper Armor and a big thrust on it, so you can still take advantage of the fact that you do have a thrusting attack and just really go crazy with your Hyper Armor. And, of course, Giant Hunt is always a great option. Charge Forth actually isn't half bad on the weapon either, though. That's something that I don't really see a lot of people using. It is the default skill, of course. You can always put it on there and utilize it and still get the benefit of your better scaling. But it actually does work pretty okay. Of course, you do have other options, and this is something that a lot of people don't really talk about with this at, uh, weapon, and that's the ability for it to have just an immense number of options with its ashes. It actually gets access to some of the uh, Great Hammer and Colossal Weapon ashes, like Golden Land and Waves of Darkness. And now that Waves of Darkness has had its follow-up swing patched, that it actually can deal damage, it might actually be a viable option, because people don't ever expect a follow-up now. So that's something to keep in mind. This weapon has a lot of options on ashes available for it. It's the only great spear that can be infused. It works great with the spear talisman. And as far as the cons are concerned, the fact that it's a linear moveset isn't really a huge deal. And to top it off, yeah, sure, the tracking isn't great and some moves are slow. But at the end of the day, you kind of want slower attacks so you can trade bits and get counters. And yeah, the tracking isn't great, but at the end of the day, if that's really the only issue with the weapon, I don't think that's a big one. Regardless, this weapon is a lot of fun to use. It's good on a lot of different builds with a lot of different ashes. So let me know down in the comments, if you've used the Lance, what kind of build do you use it on? What kind of ashes do you use with it? How do you like to use this weapon? Do you enjoy more of a defensive or offensive playstyle? Do you like to play reactive and focus on counter hits, or do you like to overwhelm your opponent with going for various combos and getting right up in their face? The weapon excels in a lot of different playstyles, on a lot of different builds, with a lot of different ashes. So with all of those options available, I want to know what you guys do with it. I want to know how you use this weapon. Let me know down in the comments, and yeah, that's all I've got. This is actually the last fight in the video. Unfortunately, the uh, Elden Ping was a little bit too much here, so the fight goes as expected, to say the least. Now, that all said, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful in one way or another, please do like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things for me, feed the algorithm. I'm really, really thrilled with the channel growth these past few months. It's great seeing it grow after being stagnant for so long. That said, I've noticed that a number of the regular viewers, returning viewers, um, are returning, but actually not subscribed. About 30% of the regular viewers are, but that means 70% of you guys who are coming back are not. And I am trying to hit 50,000 before the end of the year. I've seen channel growth on this channel for the first time in a while, so I'm starting to believe that there may in fact be a chance, so please don't prove me wrong. It would be a little heartbreaking, to be honest. But anyway, thank you all again for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.